NBC Sports, Randy Moss with us here on the Hoffman Show. Randy, good to see you. Hey, good to see you. You sure you got the right Randy Moss? I do. I say, right, I, right. I said I was not gonna. I was not gonna do the bit because I'm sure that's just all you get. <laughs> I don't care. I, I, mean, I feel like if for any sanity, you you have to slash. If you're still doing this, clearly you don't because at oh. some point you just quit and be like, I'm not doing this anymore. You, you know, if it, look, you take yourself too seriously if you let that bother you that much, right? Yeah. And I've been doing this. You know, I've been in the media for a long time, and I've dealt with the whole Randy Moss thing. I did 13 years with NFL Network. Oh, I know. You know, and the players would call me the white Randy Moss. They, they got, kind of got a kick out of it. I'd be the OG Randy Moss. I like and, that. And then I was just OG. They would see me, and it wouldn't be, my, you know. I don't think amongst NFL players there's a lot of bigger compliments than just being known as OG. <laughs> like, that is, that is where it's at. And I didn't know when I started in NFL Network whether the whole thing would be a disadvantage or not. And as it turned out... They actually remembered me easier because of my name than they would have ordinarily. So it, it actually great. wound up, in a way, you know, maybe even helping a little bit. Well, shout, shout out to the other Randy Moss there for you helping go. this Randy Moss. Yeah, he's, uh, a, he's a good guy, by the way. Yeah, if you, so if you're not familiar with, uh, with Randy's work with NBC, I've been a part of their horse racing coverage forever, did work for NFL Network for yep. a long time. And so the, the reason I, I when uh, you were offered up as a guest, I was like, yes, this is going to be a really cool conversation is – Horse racing forever has been, I don't say propped up, but like a huge part of that sport and the culture of it is gambling. Oh, yeah. And now the NFL, uh, it's always happened underground or here in Las Vegas, but like right. now that it is so mainstream, it has changed the way we consume the sport in, in many ways. And I think your perspective on that would be pretty fascinating as a guy who's lived in both worlds. So like as you see some of the ways that the gambling world has influenced the NFL now since kind of the, 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 the band-aid's been ripped off these last couple of years, like what are the things that are interesting to you about it? First of all, it was bound to happen. I mean, everybody knew that it was going to happen. You know, as much as the NFL tried to put it off and tried to say that they weren't interested and it was a you know, potential cancer and all this stuff, there's so much money out there that uh, it, was, it was inevitable, right? I, I think five, six years ago, I tried to pitch NFL Network on a gambling show. I mean, you're right. I, I'm in, I got my feet in both worlds, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I offered to host it and everything or to help them with it or whatever, but they just weren't, they weren't ready right. at that point, you know? And I still don't think NFL Network would go down that road at this, even with the you know the synergy you see with, you know you know fan all all, all the gambling sites, uh, but ESPN is is embraced it in a way, right? You know, I think it's fascinating that ESPN is launching ESPN Bet. Like you now have, yeah. I mean, the lines are so blurred in so many ways now between leagues and entities and teams and i mean we deal with this locally in dc because ted leonsis owns not just the, the the basketball and hockey team but the network that they're on and they're the only regional sports net in town and so you're kind of like it is what it is and so like those lines the journalism lines have been long crossed long dashed and now you've got a media company in espn that's like oh yeah we're also going to be the book i think that's wild and I think my journalism professors probably wouldn't approve of it. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago that uh, wealthy businessmen that wanted to own an NFL franchise and even an NBA franchise or a Major League Baseball franchise, and they also either like owned a racetrack or had a stable of racehorses, it, it was frowned upon. Mm -hmm. it, if you divest yourself from all these other things, then come back, you know, and now you're looking at, I mean, major gambling entities that are involved. Do you think that, like... How real are the, the worries of problems and of, of things that could go awry versus kind of fears that have been built up culturally over the years? I think they're overblown. Um, I mean, they're obviously, you know, there is a scenario where something like that could happen. But the NFL, for example, has so many resources. You know, I mean, they've, they've, got, to, they've got the resources to be very vigilant about things like that. Uh, and so I think the, the worry about that is uh, maybe a little too extreme. Uh, Randy Moss, NBC Sports, with us here on the Hoffman Show. Uh, the, MB the NFL's rules are so stringent, and we've seen some guys get caught up that they didn't realize they were violating the rules because of either where they placed a bet or they're, they're betting on their old college team. And like, do, yeah. do you think the NFL will change? Like, does Oops. it need? To, it, it feels like their argument is like, oh, it's a slippery slope. I, I feel like, hey, yeah, there's it may be a slippery slope, but there's like a thousand feet between us and the edge of the slope. Where, where are you on, on uh, kind of where they are? I think it's kind of ridiculous, some, some, of, the, some of that stuff. I, I think it's ridiculous that Pete Rose is still out of the Hall of Fame. 
This is a guy who who bet on baseball. Mm-hmm. He bet on his own team. Right. That's all he did. He didn't bet. He never bet on the opposing oh, yeah. team. He bet on his own team. There's plenty of other reasons to keep Pete Rose out of the Hall yeah, of Fame. Yeah. That, that I agree with you on. They should make every player bet on their own team. <laughs> I mean, in a way, they are. You know? uh, yeah, exactly. You, you win, you get, you get a better contract. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you just can't give you get an extra. So, yeah, I mean, I think, I think some of that is a little ridiculous. Uh, game this weekend, what's the most interesting storyline for you? To me, the most interesting storyline is Brock Purdy. And which Brock Purdy are we going to see? Right is uh, you know is the is the Super Bowl stage going to be the bright lights going to be a little bit too big for him? He seems like a pretty cool, calm, and collected customer, but he hasn't played as well in the two playoff games this year as he did during the regular season. Uh, why? There's really no reason why. Um, maybe it's the pressure. Maybe he won't play as well. That to me, that's really the most interesting. Here's a guy that was you know considered to be a primo MVP candidate for much of the season. Yeah, no, he was. If you were still an NFL Network, you're, in, you're you're having to do instead of getting to do this fun nonsense, you, you're you're stuck on team duty. Which of the teams would you want to be around this week, and who's the guy that you'd want to talk to? Uh, I would rather be around the Chiefs, only because I did a lot of Kansas City Chiefs stuff when I was with NFL Network. I did very little San Francisco 49ers, so I don't really have any kind of a relationship with Kyle Shanahan or very many of the players. I covered Kyle Uzcheck in college when he was with Harvard. Okay, uh, but the Chiefs have a just an outstanding organization from top to bottom. The PR people are top shelf. Andy Reid is an unbelievably good guy. Uh, so I would probably rather, for that reason, I'd rather be with yeah. the Chiefs. What's the thing about Andy Reid that you you wish more people knew? Just down to earth, totally, completely down to earth. After they won. Not the last Super Bowl, but the one before. Mm-hmm. Okay, I was Which is a nice sentence you get to say about I know, your isn't it really? Not, no, not that Super Bowl. It's the other one. <laughs> I was in Kansas City uh, covering the, uh, the, the aftermath, mm-hmm. right? I was going to be there for the parade, but I was also there when the plane came back into Kansas City, okay? Right. And covering that whole hoopla. And that night, the night after the Super Bowl win, I go to my favorite barbecue restaurant in Kansas City, and who walks in but Andy <laughs> Reid and his wife. Yep. And the whole place just erupted, and everybody stood up and gave him a standing ovation. And I'll bet you for a good 20 minutes he was taking pictures with people. That but then he, he wanted his cheeseburger. That, that he didn't know. Yeah. You know? And, and it, it just one after another after another after another, just as kind and as nice and as accommodating as he could be. And that's the Andy Reid that I've seen. That's cool. Uh, so last thing for you, because you mentioned kind of the organizational structure. Let's lo- Well, I'm going to localize it because that's what my job is as a local guy here. Um, obviously, the commanders completely remade their organization. Yeah. Uh, you talk about the impact of ownership and like you got top notch PR people. You got top notch this, top notch that. As someone who's covered the league and seen the good and the bad, like what are the separators for you of good organizations, the ones that work, the ones that can win consistently beyond the obvious of like, oh, yeah, the, the Chiefs also have Patrick Mahomes and that helps a lot. Yeah, mostly I think, and this is, <laughs> this is probably not a, uh, a plus for the commanders at this point, good people and continuity. Mm. That's, I think that's the hallmark of a really good, consistent winning organization. You look at the Ravens for years, Ozzie Newsom, right? John Harbaugh is a fantastic coach. He's been there a long time. And you look at the Steelers, right? Fantastic front office, consistency. Mike Tomlin's been there for a long time. That, I think, and the, uh, the 49ers uh, front office, you know, very stable, very consistent, a lot of longevity there. Um, I think, you know, that's what the, the commanders I know are trying to build. Uh, it takes time. Yeah. And you get Daniel Snyder out of the equation now. Uh, Helps a lot. <laughs> yeah. Did you know Adam at all? Anything that you did with San Francisco? Or you say you weren't around San Francisco? No, I v- did very little, uh, very little with San Francisco. Yeah, it's good. I think, I think that that's going to be the interesting thing because, like, in, in some ways it's a chicken and egg thing, right? Like, if you're good, you get the continuity because nobody gets fired. Um, but it's got to start somewhere. And can they, can they find the right types of people that will be invested in, in the project? I think that's been one of the interesting things that hear Josh Harris talk about is, like, he kind of talks about it as this project, as this this thing that they're building and and not as like oh we're out to win the super bowl next year and i i feel like that hopefully yeah. can lead to what you're talking about you gotta get another quarterback you know okay they, they okay they, they got the coach taken care of you got the oc taken care of kingsbury uh they get they got to find another quarterback and i think they might be uh, they may be okay the, you know the great thing about my job i, I get to do all this we could talk football get the yeah. super bowl and then as soon as this is over, I get to transition to horse racing back again. Right. right. So you got – And do all the Triple Crown prep races and, then, and then, then the Derby and then be in your neck of the woods for the Preakness. Yep. 
uh, which is always one of my favorite, uh, that could favorite be a, stops of the year. That could be a whole other show where we just have you tell Preakness stories. I have not been, but I've heard that what? is oh, the wildest go. Like the 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 the, the the like the dearth of humanity <laughs> is the infield at the Preakness. It's a little tamer than it was when I first started going. And this will be my forty fourth Derby. It'll be like my fortieth Preakness. So I go back a long way. It was a lot more uh, wide open, raucous way back in the day than it is now. They've tried to make it a little bit more genteel, yeah, and yet not take away the fun, right? Yeah. Uh, but it's uh, it's, it's something, <laughs> seen uh, some it's stuff. A, it's something pretty. You ever different. been like reporting live and just had to catch yourself because you see something happening off in the distance? Normally, our back is to all that. That's probably smart. So that's no. that's good producing. Whoever's your producer at the Kentucky Derby one year, if I can tell a little bit of an off color story. As long as you don't uh, cuss and the FCC doesn't cancel us, uh, I don't yeah. care. A buddy of mine uh, said, "Hey, bring some jeans to the track and let's go to the infield." I've always wanted to go to the Derby infield, and it's at the time it was just about as bad as the Preakness. Okay. So it's all right. So halfway through the day, it's a slow day leading up to the Derby. So, you know, change clothes, jeans. We went down to the infield. We meandered under the tunnel. And the first thing we see coming into the infield at the Kentucky Derby is this massive humanity, probably 30, 40 people in a circle, right? And they got their hands over their head, and they're all yelling and screaming. And so we walk over there and say, what's going on? And we get there at about the same time the riot police get there. Oh, boy. And so the crowd parts, and it's a couple having sex. Of course. On the sidewalk. Of course. No clothes thrown everywhere, and so they get blankets like dogs or something, you know, <laughs> and, and they just throw, throw blankets over them, <laughs> and they haul them off to the to the retaining area. You know, that was my very first experience uh, at the Kentucky Derby and Field. And you're like, I think I'm going to go back and put the put the other clothes on. I'm going to go be on television <laughs> now. Uh, Randy Moss, a part of NBC Sports, uh, they do have the Triple Crown races coming up yeah. uh, here in just a few weeks. Uh, Randy, appreciate your time. Thank you. Hey. Anytime. Hey, this is DA, and you're listening to The Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.